All right, so in section four, we're going to talk about basic web forms. Now, HTML5 has some great new tags and other features when it comes to forms, but we're not going to discuss that just yet. We're going to go over that in depth in chapter four and five. So in this section, I just want to go over what a form is and, and what the basic syntax of a valid HTML form is. Okay, so let's talk about what a form is and what it does. An HTML web form lets websites become interactive by allowing user input. So without forms, there's not too much we can do to actually talk to a website or to get feedback based on what we're looking for. Um, forms have front-end and back-end processing. Now, HTML takes care of the front-end and another language needs to take care of the back-end. And that can be PHP, ASP, um, there's a number of server-side languages that will process your form. HTML is, is used for a presentation only, an input only. It doesn't actually process the form. Now forms include a series of HTML input tags and other elements. There's uh, the text area tag, the select tag, the label tag, and we're going to go over those in this section. So we have the form tag, and like I said, it wraps around the entire form and all its elements. Um, and the common attributes for a form tag would be the action. This would be an attribute of the form tag. It specifies the page or the script that would process the form. And this would be done on the server side. This wouldn't be HTML. Um, what we would do would just be to define whatever file was to process the form we would define that so it could be say process.php and that would be a file on your server that processes the form now method method is how the form gets processed and I'm, I'm not going to really go over this here because it's out of scope um, for instance in PHP you have the get and the post method um, the get would be would send the the uh, the information through the URL, and a post the post method would send it through the form, and it would be you you wouldn't be displayed in the URL. Um, but that's that's something else. That's um, server side scripting. But these are the two most common attributes for a form tag. So next we have the input tag, and the input tag is one of the most important elements of a form and there's multiple different types the first attribute we have here is type and that could be text uh, password it could be a checkbox radio button submit button um, there's multiple different types of, of input tags now the next the next attribute we have here is one that would probably show up on all of the fields um, if the if the form is going to be processed somewhere else, uh, if it's going to be processed with PHP, it would have a name, and that's that name is how you would identify that element in the script that it gets processed in. So, and it can also be used in client side. It can be used with Java JavaScript um, validation. It can be used for numerous things. Um, next, we have the size, which will specify the width of the input field, uh, usually a text field. It would define the width in characters, so if you wanted it 50 characters long, you, the attribute would be size 50. Um, the max would be the maximum amount of characters allowed, and you can set this to 1 to whatever, 500. Um, so these are, the, yeah, these are the most common attributes used on this particular tag. So the input tag is not the only field we can use for user input. Uh, text area is another one, and a text area tag is used for a large block of text. And this would be maybe a comments field or a, a message field on a contact form, um, which, which I'll be showing you in the project for this section. And the text area tag takes, takes a name attribute, just like the input and pretty much the rest of the the uh, input type tags and it has a rows a rows and a calls attribute and the rows would specify the length the number of lines which would be the length the rows of the text area and the calls would specify the visible width so it would be the the number of vertical uh, columns now we have the max length 
attribute which would specify the maximum number of characters allowed in the text area. Uh, this is just like the max attribute for the for the um, the input tag that we just talked about. Uh, so those are the, the basic attributes for the text area tag. And here we have the select tag and the select tag is used for drop down type fields. Uh, it can be single it's the single arrow that you click and uh, a, a drop down will show and you'll you'll select one or it could be the kind where it's a, lo a list of multiple options and you can hold shift or control and select multiple options and it, it takes the name attribute just like all the other input fields uh, and if you want it to be the kind of drop down where you can actually select more than one then you would have the multiple attribute and it also has the size attribute which would specify the maximum of visible options this would probably be used on the multiple type of drop down uh, if, if they only wanted you to pick maybe two out of the five options or something like that so um, that's the select tag alright so next we have the label tag and the label tag is a, a form element but it's not a user input element it's used to associate a field's heading with the input field so you might have something like first name just the text first name and then maybe the input tag directly off of it, after it and what this will do if you wrap that text in a label it will associate that text with the form with the input field so if you click on the text it'll highlight it'll actually highlight the input field that it, that text belongs to and it takes the for attribute which will just uh, specify which form element the label is and this would go this would match up with the input elements name attribute the last form related element we're going to talk about is the field set tag and it's used to group together different input fields um, here we have a, an example you'll see we have the name field set this is just the field set open tag and then you would have the input fields and then you would close it and this is, would be the sports field set so you'd open the field set tag add that whatever it can be input boxes check boxes radio and then you just close the field set and that would by default your browser will most likely draw this border around it with the label of the field set here and as far as attributes we have the name just like any other form field um, the form which would just specify the name of the form and then we have a disabled attribute and this would just disable all the fields within a certain field set. So now I think we're ready to dive into our project and implement all these form elements that we've talked about.